I'm going to start this off with if you had $500,000 today and you put it into a fund, say the S&P 500, and got a 10%, 10.5% yield, you would have $10 million within 30 years. All right, this is one of the dumbest questions ever. Someone asked me the other day, would I take $500,000, I'm gonna get into why it's really silly, or have dinner with Jay-Z? And I said, I would take the $500,000 because I can turn that $500,000 into millions. And he was like, but it's Jay-Z. And let's talk about Jay-Z. Well, let's talk about why that is silly. Who is going to pay you $500,000 or you have an opportunity to have dinner with Jay-Z? It's just silly. It's just silly. This is some of the stuff that people come up with when they're bored. <laughs> but all right, let's talk about Jay-Z. Jay-Z, who was in his former life a criminal, and he went mainstream. You know how fantastically hard that is? I'm going to say there's something exceptional about Jay-Z. He's not a normal person. And this is where people get into problems with coaching. I got a friend who is a millionaire and he tried to launch a coaching program and the coaching program failed. He cannot teach people what he knows. I actually had to, cause when I sat down and I looked at the program and I was like, you have to pay me for this. Cause uh, essentially, you don't have an understanding of what a student is. And you can't take him on a journey. And um, he had to pay me a lot of money to help him work this out. And then I helped him work it out because here's the thing. Just because you are successful, let's say, do you think Tom Brady is going to make a great coach? He might or he might not. If you will notice, the best coaches have not been football players. Bill Belichick, Tom, um, Tom, Mike Tomlin. Uh, if you look across the league, the best football coaches have not been football players. You have a few who were football players who then became coaches, but typically what has happened is the players who were coaches, the coaches who were players don't really do that well. And I'm gonna tell you why. And this, this is, uh, we're about to get into my business online uh, courses. There is the skill set that makes you money, which is a complete and different skill set. Let's say Jay Z skill set is communication, creating music, and taking that money and plowing it into business ventures. This is something that can be taught. However, can Jay-Z teach it? See, one of the things that so many people underestimate is the work that it goes in that's involved in becoming an educator. This is a completely different skill set than your original skill set. And one of the things that helped me when I created my first book, Making Money A to Z with Self-Storage Unit Auctions, is I went really deep. I put my foot in that book and that book helped out a lot of people learn the storage auction business. So that was my first foray into education and then coaching. So that was something that I found out I was good at. There are many people who like a Tom Brady or a Ben Rosberger, you know, people who were, you know, Tom Brady, 22 years, Ben Rosberger, 18 years in the NFL. Uh, they have a lot of knowledge, but once again, just because you yourself are successful doesn't mean that you can teach other people how to be successful if you don't understand the role of an educator and how to be an educator. There's a reason. Now, this is interesting. 
teachers, nurses, uh, scientists. Dave Ramsey did this research. Every profession that requires you to learn a certain formula to do your, your a formula or system to do your profession, these people did really well with investing and getting rich because they understood how to follow and implement a formula. Okay. So Jay-Z is successful as he is. And it's interesting that Kanye West is the richest rapper over Jay-Z. And it didn't come from music. It came from Yeezys. So let's say you had an hour long, let's say you had a three hour dinner with Jay-Z. You had drinks, you had the main course, you had dessert. What could Jay-Z tell you in three hours that would literally transform your life? Um, once again, Jay-Z may or may not be a good educator because as successful as he is, and you've seen this with NFL coaches, uh, Tom McVay, I think the coach for the LA Rams, I don't think he ever played football professionally or college. I'm not sure, you know, uh, I'll Google that after this. But this guy, as young as he is, has gotten to the Super Bowl two times. You've got NFL coaches like Andy Reid, who never, I don't think Andy Reid got to the Super Bowl when he coached the Eagles. He got to the Super Bowl when he went to the Chiefs. Um, so what I'm trying to tell you is, first of all, and that's just the small part of it. The, the coaching is just a small part of it. The larger lesson is you have to be a trainable student. See, that's another part of this that's missing from this conversation. Let's say JC gave you some of the best sauce, gave you some of the best game, and you're a bad student. You've been better off taking a $500,000. But here's what I've learned. And I've had many, many, many mentors in my life. And you know what? It, it never happened like they sat me down and served up some sauce. I saw how they lived their life and I started to duplicate what I saw them do. Let me say that again. I saw how they lived their lives and I started to duplicate what they did. Like holding company. You know who, who gave me some of the, well, he gave me the trust fund game was my landlord when I was in the uh, storage auction business. My landlord, because I used to make my checks out to such and such trust because he had about 35 buildings inside this trust and they were all paid off. So we write these checks to these trust. And these checks, this trust would uh, divide the dividends out to the trustees the trust fund babies. And I honestly, my landlord, we probably had maybe 20 conversations and the longest conversation may have been 15 minutes. And I learned so much from this man based on what he did in my willingness to do the work because many people don't understand the student teacher relationship because there are some teachers who are gifted and this is their teachers whose students love them because they're so gifted. Uh, I recently put out a video talking about my failure in the car rental business. And a lot of people on YouTube won't do that. They will straight up lie to you and not tell you that stuff. So one of the reasons that I have so many people who rock with me is they know that I'm honest and I will not lie to them just to get views or to get their money. And that kind of currency is kind of hard to buy. It's very hard to buy. But I built the reputation of being honest, even when the truth is ugly. And that's just who I am. So this is one of the reasons I have so many people who rock with me, because I'm not going to sit there and pretend or lie or say something was better than it was. I'm not going to come on the YouTubes with some type of character. 
So once again, it's a stupid, silly conversation where you would take, because first of all, there has to be someone who has $500,000 that they're willing to give you. And then you also have to have the arrangement where Jay-Z is going to have dinner with you. Uh, you know how, first of all, who's just going to give someone $500? It's like, hey, you know, it's like Morpheus in the uh, Matrix. You have the red pill, you have the blue pill. You take this blue pill, you get 500,000. You take this red pill, you get dinner with Jay-Z. Who's setting this up? It's just stupid. And uh, I did some research on this, and <laughs> it seems that Jay-Z was like, take the money. Because Jay-Z knows there's nothing he can tell you over dinner that's gonna make you $500,000. I mean, once again, Jay-Z was exceptional. That's the thing that people don't get. Tom Brady is exceptional. Aaron Rodgers is exceptional. Russell Wilson is exceptional. Elon Musk is exceptional. And everybody, and I see all these videos from these young people who want to talk to all these millionaires. And I'm gonna tell you, all right, so you can have a conversation with a millionaire. All right, you had that conversation. What is that gonna do for you? See. Here's the thing, if you're not actively doing something, these conversations are pointless, worthless, and just a waste of time. Uh, one of the reasons my mentors helped me because I was in the, I was doing, I was already running a business, and then I saw, oh man, this is good, and then I implemented this in my business. See, I was doing something. Like I said, no one can talk you into becoming a millionaire. No one can talk you into becoming a billionaire. If you look at Jay-Z's career in the early years, he worked extremely hard. He worked really, really hard. So it's going to be interesting with Tom Brady retiring, Ben Roethlisberger to see what they would do because, you know, some players can coach. Some people can break down concepts. Some people can't. And this is going to be really interesting to look forward to, to see what they do. And Russell Wilson, he's been in the NFL nine years, 10 years, right? So once you get to that level, you, you be sure to get your NFL pension. And then two, you got a timeline because this is when quarterbacks like Matthew Stafford, he was with the Detroit Lions forever. Then he goes to the LA Rams and he goes to the Super Bowl. Incidentally, with the LA Rams, that was his first postseason wins since he's been in the NFL. He had three postseason wins. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who wins this thing because you got two SEC quarterbacks. You have Joe Burrow and you have Matt, Matt Stafford. And you got Jamar Chase, and you got uh, this Cup dude, and it's going to be a really interesting Super Bowl. Really interesting. But once again, information without action is pointless. And that's one of the things, because I'm seeing all over the line that many people feel that they can talk you into becoming a millionaire. Uh, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You've got to do something, you've got to build something, you've got to be somebody. Because one of the things I've learned, and I had to learn how to do online courses. Because everyone was like, oh, he sells online courses. Uh -huh. As if it's so easy. I, there's a group, and you can join these two groups on Facebook. There's a Teachable group, and there's a Think of it group. And you have literally thousands of people who have created courses that can't sell none of them. Because here, here's the process. First of all, if you want to sell online courses, you're going to need some traction somewhere. Uh, some people buy ads, which can work if your course is oriented toward it for an ad. Like the stuff that I sell, ads are not going to work because there's layers to what I do. So people kind of have to get to know me, get to know what I stand by, get to know what I have to offer. They have to 
understand there, there needs to be an established relationship because this is how I can make six figures a month without running ads, which if you're in the online course business, that's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. And this isn't something that just literally happened overnight. This YouTube channel is 12 years old. So I got a lot of assets in my favor, but the first thing is you've got to have an audience. It could be, I mean, you can sell online courses to 50, like you got a thousand dollar online course, you sell it to 50 people, that's 50,000. You can do that in a month. That's pretty good, that's really good revenue. So, you know, a lot of people, the, the jealous, the, uh, the moist male crew, if it's so easy, I present this challenge. This challenge is from me, Glendon Cameron, to you. If it's so easy to sell online courses, why don't you create an online course and sell it and let's see how well you do. Let's see how well you do. I guarantee you, you ain't gonna sell nothing because you don't know how to do it. And this is one of the things that we have to get into with teaching and education because like I said, uh, I've been dealing with, as you know, I shut down the car rental business and I've been selling cars. All January, I was dealing with wrecked cars. That was what I was dealing with, wrecked cars, insurance, and selling wrecked cars and cleaning up the parking lot because I had cars that were a total loss in the parking lot and it was looking pretty ugly. So we roll into February and we have gotten rid of, I got one more car that's wrecked. Uh, they need to come pick it up. I should be getting a check anytime this month. So I'm getting ready to do something new and it's gonna be based upon the Institute of Economic Thought. And I see people, and this is what's really interesting. People ask me questions in the comments as if I'm gonna answer them. It is so cute. Like, what's the purpose of this channel? I'm like, um, there are so many videos on here that have answered that. If you are too lazy to go look, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to entertain you and talk to you in a comment. You get people who leave comments like, is this the dude and blah, blah, blah. It just what I like to call messy people comments. These people are not here to be entertained. They're here to be entertained at your expense. They're not looking to be educated. So I'm gonna do some training and it's gonna be a new platform. It's gonna be, so you will get to become a founder of this new process. And there's gonna be a lot of things to it because I've been doing this since 2014. And I've become pretty good at it. So one of the things is that you must understand where the student is and two, you must understand if the student is qualified for the training. And that's something that I was a little weak on. A little, I was really weak on that because this next thing is gonna be more student friendly, average person friendly. And one of the things you gotta understand, and I, I've been saying this, you start a business, like let's look at my recent car, biz, car rental business debacle. I spent eight months testing. I bought 30 cars and I run them on the platform to get hard data, hard data, hard marketplace data. And I got hard marketplace data. And the data said, don't go any further. Because I'm gonna tell you one data point that I've never seen here on YouTube, the attrition rate. I was losing 1.5 cars per month. I've never saw anyone ever talk about losing cars. It was like, this car got wrecked, maybe got damaged. Uh, car b, b who stopped making YouTube videos actually talked about cars being stolen. I've never saw that data point. And I only had 30 cars, and there's supposed to be these people here on YouTube who have fleets of 50, 60, 60. No, they don't. They're lying. If they had fleets, because like I said, once uh, 10 fleet, 10 cars isn't that much to manage. Uh, 20, it kind of gets, and then 30, it gets into full-time. It was like a full-time job. And that data point, which uh, if you check out James Anderson's comments, he has the same uh, attrition rate. So it ain't just me. And if you have a significant number of cars, you're gonna have what's called attrition. You're gonna have people wreck your cars, 
and you're gonna have people damage your cars beyond repair. Or they're gonna be extremely expensive repairs. I had a guy rent a Toyota Camry, drove it without cooling and oil, and ruined the engine. The replacement of the engine was gonna be like $5,000. I mean, one, one, that, that, that's something that no, not on one YouTube video that anyone ever talked about was an attrition rate. Never ever came out. So one of the things with YouTube is people will tell you feel good stuff, they will lie to you, they will shape the narrative, and they will leave out pertinent information because the video that I made on Hustlers Kung Fu the other day, if I saw that video, I never would have gotten the car rental business. Because this is one of the things, this is the Institute of Economic Thoughts. I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. And a lot of people, this is the channel of doom and gloom. Tell me some fairy tales so I can sleep well at night. Lose me with that. Miss me with that. Because as an adult, you should be able to deal with the truth. Like this whole conversation, the dinner with Jay-Z of $500,000, which I, I just found that to be an extremely silly conversation. Because you could take that $500,000 and put it in the S&P and become a millionaire pretty much within 10 years. And this is without additional contributions. Just take that 500,000, park it in the S&P, in 10 years you'll be a millionaire. So there's so many things you can do. And like me, I wouldn't take the money and put it in the S&P. I would take the money and I would put it to use. Like with the car rental business, uh, I was testing this. And once I got the, the hard economic data, it said, don't go any further. Cause uh, I bought, 31 cars, I could have bought more, but I intentionally stopped because I needed to get data. And I honestly didn't know if I was gonna stay in this business at that juncture when I stopped buying cars because these lying YouTubers don't, they won't tell you the truth or they don't really know the business. This is something that I've seen and this, there was a guy by the name of Dorian Develops and he talks about this, is that YouTubers will get on the hot is trend and talk about something they have no experience about. Like, if I have no experience about it, I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, but that, many YouTubers will talk about a topic, get a bunch of views, make a bunch of YouTube money, and actually do no one any real good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. But, you know, this whole conversation, dinner with Jay-Z, it feeds into a further, a, a bigger issue. And this is something, and this, there's a whole industry based upon mentoring and talking to people. And one of the things that's really hard as an educator is to get people to do their homework. Because if you, because here's the thing, if I tell you how to do something and you actually do the homework, your chances of being successful go up tenfold. But if you just, I give a class, she's like, great class, man, great class, love the information, and you do nothing with it, it ain't gonna do nothing with you. And that is the biggest problem. So one of the things is you're gonna have to do something. You're gonna have to do something. Jay-Z, he created a lot of music. He created a lot of albums. He did a lot of concerts. He, he got into business ventures. Uh, Sean Combs, another one, he did it. Uh, Sean was worth $750 million and he was working 12, 14 hour days. And that's something that a lot of people don't recognize uh, that people with money actually work. They're on this real housewives of Atlanta stuff where people have this money and all they do is go shopping and have fancy lunches and hang out. None of my friends that I know who are millionaires do any of that. They, they, they work. All, all the people I know, like my friend that I did a video about at the uh, corporate game, it's worth about 100 million. He buys and sells apartment complexes. He's 75. He wakes up every day at six o'clock. He goes into his home gym. He works out. Then he comes up, has breakfast with his wife, and then he goes into his home office and works. He is 75 years old. Now, 
His home office is very nice. His house is very nice. His wife is 50. He got him a young tender. He got him a young tender tender. And one of the things that I consistently see is people are unwilling to do the work and they want to be talked into becoming a millionaire. And it's just simply not gonna happen, man. It's just not gonna happen. And this is one of the issues that I have with a lot of stuff that's online because uh, I have watched many YouTube videos that I tried to implement the technique or strategy and it just simply didn't work. But it sounds good in theory. It sounds really, really good in theory. But the reality is, it's worthless information. It's like junk food for the mind. So if someone comes to you and says, dinner with Jay-Z or 500,000, blue pill, red pill, take the blue pill, take the money. And if you did nothing to, other than park it in an investment, you'd be a millionaire within 10 years. If that's the only thing you ever did. Only thing you ever did. So let me know your feelings and opinions of this dinner with Jay-Z or 500,000 co conversation because it cracks me up because I know I would take the $500,000 so quick. I don't personally feel because, you know, if I was a let, let's go ahead and say if I was a musical person, if I was an artist that I still would take the 500,000, but I would still say, hey, Jay-Z, how much is 500,000 I have to give you to have a, a meeting with me? You know, that would be worth the money. And I don't think Jay would charge you $500,000 to have a meeting with him if you're serious and you're, you've got a, a book of work. But yeah, that whole conversation is stupid. It's just stupid because we're in this era where people feel that they can have these conversations about getting wealthy and do none of the work about getting wealthy. All the people that I know who are wealthy work. That's the key. It's not the information. Because right now, we all know that if you go to medical school, work hard and become a doctor, you make a lot of money. We know if you go to engineering school and work hard, and you're making money. So we already have a baseline knowledge of what it takes to make money, but people are unwilling to do the work. And that's the big issue. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions to the, the new folks who leave these well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you. And I will see you guys in the next one.